Today's feel like temperature is expected to climb to around 105 degrees in certain areas. And we want to help you stay safe in these scorching temperatures. We've had several heat advisories, in fact, this past week, and are looking at another one possibly this weekend as well, and help you to better understand then how to protect you and your kids as well. Dr. Sharag Patel is the Assistant Chief Medical Officer for UF Health Jacksonville and is joining us live via Zoom this morning to explain the warning signs of heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Good morning, doctor. Thanks for being with us. Morning. So first, how much water? Let's talk. We tell our viewers all the time about the importance of hydrating. How much water should an adult be drinking to offset these hot, offset these hot temperatures, particularly if they they work outside? Yeah, one of the most important things you can do when you're out in the sun or the heat is to stay hydrated. And adults need about 20 to 24 ounces of fluid for every 20 minutes in the heat. And I know that seems like a lot of fluid, but if you think about how much you actually sweat, you are losing a lot of fluid. And so 20 to 24 ounces of fluid every 20 minutes in the heat is what the standard is. You also lose salt and other minerals when sweating. So other drinks which contain electrolytes like sodium, potassium, and chloride are also really important. Uh, and when you'll be out in the heat of the sun for an extended period of time, you really need to avoid uh, alcohol-containing fluids and those with caffeine. Yeah, so it's interesting because essentially what you're saying for our view to be, viewer to be able to kind of, uh, you know, visualize this is you're talking about three to four bottles of the kind of the typical size water bottles every 20 minutes. That is a lot of water. And clearly there are a lot of people who are not drinking enough. Now, what about children? Do they need to drink the same amount of water? What's the basic guideline for them? Because we know parents love to get their kids outside, kind of run them, let them burn off a lot of that energy since they're out of school. Absolutely. You know, children, depending on their size, are going to need about 8 to 12 ounces of fluid every 20 minutes in the heat. That's about a glass to a glass and a half of, of some fluid every 20 minutes they're going to be outside. So for people who, you know, they, I hear this all the time, in fact, for my kids, they just don't love the taste of water. Uh, are there any other substitutes that are better than others? And specifically, what should they not be drinking? I think that parents tend to think, well, this is a liquid of some kind, so it's okay if we give it to the kids. Yeah, absolutely. That's a pretty common thought that it's a liquid, so I should be okay. Uh, really, for those who don't like the taste of water, you can do things like add flavoring drops to your water, which are available at most grocery and convenience stores. Uh, sports drinks uh, like Gatorade are also options, uh, though you do need to balance this with some sugar-free sugar options as well. Uh, I do not recommend soft drinks, especially those containing sugar and caffeine, because sugar and caffeine can both cause your body to make more urine than it should which can speed up your fluid loss. There are plenty of other sugar and caffeine-free carbonated beverages that are out there that are safer alternatives. Would you explain the warning signs of heat exhaustion? Yeah, so with heat exhaustion, you know, you're, you're thinking cold, clammy skin, heavy sweating, cramps, you can get weakness, your pulse can get rapid, headaches, dizziness, passing out, and nausea. If you end up not making as much sweat as you were, that's a sign you're very dehydrated and on your way to heat stroke. And, and then, you know, obviously you need to get medical attention, particularly if it's moving to heat stroke, uh, which has have similar warning signs as well, uh, including passing out. Uh, but, but that said, as we look at this high fever, confusion, rapid pulse, headache, nausea for heat stroke warning signs, what is the best thing for someone who's concerned that they've got a loved one who is suffering from this, other than obviously calling 911, that they can do right then and there to help? Yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll talk about them in a, in a couple of different uh, sections here. So prevention is always going to be the best treatment. So if you're going to be in the sun or the heat for an extended period of time, you've got to fit in breaks to get out of the sun and get into a cool place at least every hour. Uh, something other important that you can do are things like applying sunscreen, wearing lightweight and loose-fitting clothing, wearing a hat, uh, and if possible, wearing UV blocking or reflecting, uh, reflecting fabric. Uh, if you're going to be exerting yourself in the heat of the sun, don't overexert yourself and go to a sl uh, slower pace than normal. But if you do happen to uh, develop heat exhaustion or a loved one develops heat exhaustion, move them to a cooler place uh, immediately, ideally with air conditioning. You can try to lower their body temperature by loosening their clothes. You can get a cloth damp with cool water or sponges and apply it to their skin. You can try to get them in a cool shower or a bath. You can also give them sips of water. Uh, if that person is vomiting, their symptoms worsen or they don't improve within an hour, they've got to immediately seek medical attention. The difference here with heat stroke though is heat stroke can lead to permanent consequences if it's not addressed quickly. So if you have somebody uh, that, that develops heat stroke, 
Call 911 and get them to uh, medical care immediately. Uh, and then just like with heat exhaustion, move them to a cooler place, lower their body temperature how you can, get them into a, a cool shower or a tub and fan them aggressively. But what's different is you do not want to give them anything to drink. Typically with heat stroke, you have an individual who becomes confused and trying to force liquids can lead them to inhale the liquids and can cause problems like pneumonia or lung injury. Dr. Patel, excellent information, particularly very timely given how hot it's been lately. Thank you for your time this morning. We appreciate it.